Hey guys, welcome back to Planet J Judah, and today we are going to recreate the world's first ever granny square pattern that was published, believe it or not, in the 1880s. So in 1885, April 4th to be exact, Mrs. Phelps wrote a letter and it was published in the Prairie Farmers Magazine with this pattern and we are going to recreate it today. Now, I will be honest, I was gonna show or talk about the creator of the granny stitch or granny cluster itself, but for the life of me, I can't find all of that information. So, but I did find a couple of articles that I really enjoyed in regards to the granny square that was originated by, again, Mrs. Phelps. The two articles that I have are the Yarn Queen, the world's first granny square pattern. Actually, no. Let me. Okay, yeah, it's the world's first granny square p pattern, and it has plus seven more to make. So, the world's first granny square pattern by the Yarn Queen is where I got not only this pattern, but some great information, as well as the Peace, Peacework Magazine, Nicole Gustus authored, author of the first granny square, translating the 1880s crazy quilt trend to crochet. So that's gonna open me up to crazy quilt. So Mrs. Phelps, in loving the well, I'm assuming loving the crazy quilt trend that was going on in the 1880s, which I will pop up a picture so that you can see, translated that kind of information and made it a crochet pattern, which is this one that you see right here. And it was called crazy work at that time. And you can see it's very different but very similar to the traditional granny square that we know and love today. Now that pattern was created almost three years after Mrs. Phelps' pattern in March 4th of 1888, Eva or Ava Marie, Marie Niles, oh my goodness, my, my, my brain, uh, published in the Boston Globe, the pattern that we know and love today. So I am gonna show you. This is done with the same exact yarn. I used the same gauge, same hook. It was a five, uh, five millimeter, so the crochet H8 five millimeter hook. And I used the same exact yarn as you can tell by the color, but Ava Marie Niles pattern is slightly bigger than the Mrs. Phelps pattern, but they are so neat. I love them both. And so you only traditionally use the four colors instead of five, which we typically do in our granny squares today. So this was termed crazy work. And I believe this was also crazy work because it was just an a little change to the original. The term granny afghan, because they were these were made into blankets, didn't come until about 48 years later in the new movie magazine, December 1933 issue. And that was where they gave the granny afghan term, which is really kind of interesting. So nearly 60, Eight years later from Mrs. Phelps' pattern, the term Granny Square came into play on November 24th, 1953 in the Daily Times News from Burlington, North Carolina, and it just spread like wildfire from there. And then, of course, in the 1970s, everybody was doing the Granny Square for just about everything from blankets to clothing, you name it, it just exploded and has remained a very loved uh, 
motif in the crochet world to this day. It kind of simmered down and got picked up, but in 2020, I want to say, it really got picked up. So it's still a pretty, pretty valid of a motif <laughs> today. And it's actually one of my favorites because it is so easy, so mindless that you can almost, I'm not there yet, but some people actually can do this pattern without even looking at it. Someday I may get there. I don't know, we'll see. So, but for now, I'm going to show you how to make the world's first granny square pattern. It's actually pretty interesting and a lot of fun. Oh, and by the way, I will link both of the articles where you can learn about all of this and also pick up your own copy of the pattern for the world's first granny square pattern in the description box below. Let me go ahead and bring you down and we will go ahead and get started. First, let me read the letter that Mrs. Phelps sent or wrote for the Prairie Farmer magazine. And it states, or it says, I have been trying a new crocheted pattern for an Afghan, which is on the principle of the crazy work so popular now. It is made in strips of the desired length and with two of the blocks, which I have brought forming the width. And it shows the figure or picture. The long strips are crocheted together with a double chain stitch, which is twisted and of any two desirable colors. The small blocks can be sewn or drawn together so as to make a perfect square. This joining being done on the way on the wrong side. The idea is to have the blocks appear as one straight strip. Use German Germantown wool, the colors of the block being bright and varied to one's taste, but the outer edge of each is black. And that's simply the letter. And like I said, this will be in the description box below. It is in the article from the Yarn Queen, as you can see right there. And we will go ahead and get started. I will read as I go the instructions by Mrs. Phelps and then say with it in a more modern as the Yarn Queen gave us. Um, because the original instructions are a little um, hard, at least for me, to understand. It might be really easy for you, which is great. Because, I mean, to each, everybody's brains works differently. And obviously mine does not work well with Mrs. Phelps' instructions. But I was able to create her granny square. I am not going to be using the same colors as you see. I'm going to be actually using uh, a peach an icy orange, a blue, and a green, a light blue and a light green. So that being said, let's now bring you down and we will get started on creating our world's first granny square pattern. All right, so her instructions is first row, make a chain of a circle, then over that work 12 long stitches and fasten together the worsted by drawing through two or three stitches and fasten and cut it off. Simple instructions, but I can't quite understand it. So I'm going to go with the Yarn Queen's ex uh, explanation, and that is simply start with a slip knot and then we will chain four. Now, this is where the biggest difference is from the classic granny square and the original pattern. So we will chain four, which we all know from the original pattern. However, in this one, we are going to double crochet into the first 
chain formed. And then double crocheting 10 more into that same spot. So we have essentially, we've created our first two double crochet and then we are going to add 10 more double crochet into that same space. So instead of creating a magic ring or chaining four and creating slip stitching into that first chain and creating a ring, we are simply using that first chain to make our ring. Does that make sense? Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and crochet the 10 remaining double crochets. Okay, so at this point we should have a total of 11 double crochets and then one chain three creating the 12th double crochet. So we are going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three, which will be one, two, three, right here. And then we will fasten off, cut our work, and get ready for the next round. All right, so we are ready for our second row, and clearly you can see what a difference it is from the original, the original, excuse me, the traditional granny square, classic granny square that we know and love today, but you will get the same look, even though this looks completely different. So what we're going to do is we're going to add our next color, which I'm going to go ahead and use, I think, green, if I can get it to come undone here. Okay, so for round two, the original instructions are second row with another color worsted, start a shell between any of the 12 stitches in the previous row or preceding row. The shell consists of six long stitches with one chain between the third and fourth stitches. Make four of these shells, join the first and fourth and finish off the end of the worsted as before. So. For us, we are going to simply, it doesn't matter where we start at, we can start at the, where we originally started or anywhere in between any of them. We're just going to go in between one of the stitches and let's see, I'm going to find a stitch here and we are going to slip stitch our new color onto the ring here, if I can get it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I don't know why it's harder for me to do this when I'm on camera than when I actually do it. But there you go. Slip stitch, there we go, yay, we slip stitched. Okay, so now we're going to, I believe, chain three as before, which will count as our double crochet. And then we are going to do three, two more double crochet, chain one, and then three more double crochet in that same space. So we need to chain one here. This yarn is actually a lot thinner than the previous. Okay, that's fine. It's fine. It is what it is. I've got it started. We're going to just continue and play along. So now we are going to skip three chains or three double crochets. Whoops, sorry. I'll... We're going to skip three. One, two, three. And we're going to double crochet into that fourth spot there and then do two more double crochets. Chain one, and then three more double crochets. And I'm gonna continue doing this all the way around until I get back to my beginning. 
All right, so now I am back to my first one and I'm going to slip stitch into that first, uh, into the top of that chain three. We're gonna fasten off, cut the yarn, And now we have, oops, sorry. Now we have our second row. That green is really thin compared to the other. So it's gonna be interesting to see how it works up the rest of the way. All right, so for round three or the third row, with another color, make a shell of six long stitches with one chain between the third and fourth stitches in the center of the shell of the preceding row. One each side between these shells makes three long stitches. Finish off the same as for first and second row. So for us, we're simply going to slip, slip knot in between one of the shells. It doesn't matter which ones, but we're gonna slip stitch in between one of the corner shells. So I'm gonna just pick this one. and try and pull that through whether you caught on there we go whoops okay so now we need to make our slip stitch and just as the previous row we're going to chain three Three. Then we are going to double crochet in that same spot just as before. Two more times. Then chain one and repeat now with three double crochet in that same spot. So now we are basically doing the same as any classic granny square but we're not going to put any chains in between any of the stitches. We're just gonna go right into that next um, chain or the next space right here. And we're going to do three double crochets. Three. And we're gonna move into the corner space chain or sorry corner space with three double crochet chain one and three double crochet and then just keep going around as we have been all right we are back at the beginning we're going to slip stitch in the top of that chain three which is right here We're going to fasten off, cut our work, and move on to the next row. And this is what we are looking at right now. And for our first, fourth, and final row, we will be adding the green, or I'm sorry, the blue. But in the original instructions, it said fourth row, with the block, make one long stitch between each stitch of the preceding row except at the center of the shell and the stitch on e each side of it, putting two stitches in each place on each corner. Again, that's a little over my head. And this is obviously, this is where we very differ from our traditional classic granny stitch, granny square as we know it today. But we're gonna start in the corner, just as the previous rows before. And we're gonna slip stitch, if I can get it. There we go. 
slip stitch and this time we are going to let's see what does it say chain one the chain one space in the corner okay yes we're we're starting in the corner and work four chains and one double crochet this counts as two double crochet and one by one chain space so we're gonna chain four three four and then a double crochet Okay, so for this one, I'm going to put a safety pin in that third chain. So one, two, three, that way I know where I need to slip stitch into. And now we are going to, that is our corner. Now we are gonna go in between each of our stitches with a double crochet. So not in the top, actually in between each of the stitches and we're gonna do a double crochet. And we're gonna do that all the way across until we get back to the corner where we will do a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So as you can see, I'm going in between each of the double crochets. Is that better? Is that easier to see? Going in between each of the double crochets from the preceding row with a double crochet. Not at the top. And we're gonna work our way into the corner. So, now we're at the chain one spot, so that's the corner, and we're gonna do our first double crochet, chain one, second double crochet. And then, whoop, pull out my more yarn. Then we're gonna repeat as we did this first part of the, the row. So we're gonna go in between, I did not do I am just now noticing that I did I accidentally only did two double crochets so I'm gonna be short but that's okay it doesn't matter it's forgiving I'm not gonna go back and try and fix it but just as the first side we're gonna go in between each double crochet to the corner working our way around the square. We're in the second corner, or I should say third corner. We're gonna, whoops, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then move on to the next double crochet. I will meet you back around at the beginning to finish off. All right, we are back at the beginning. We are going to slip stitch into this first, or the top of that chain three, which is right here. We are going to fasten off and be done with our granny square. I'm going to fasten off, weave in my ends, and I will be right back. All right, and here we are. Isn't that the cutest? 
And that is how you crochet the world's first granny square pattern. That is so cute. I absolutely love it. And actually, I could see adding more and more um, colors to make it a bigger square. Just do it, finishing it off with this border instead of what we traditionally do today, which is the open same as below. So, but anyways, that is the world's first granny square pattern. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, I would appreciate it if you would hit the thumbs up button. Thumbs up button. And if you'd like to be notified of any and all future uploads, please subscribe and click all on the notification bell. And with that, remember, gravity works, guys. <laughs>